Good morning, church. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Yes. We are so thankful to God this morning for blessing us with another wonderful Lord's Day. Yes, Today I have a wonderful lesson that's laid out for you that's entitled, Salvation is Not a One-Hit Wonder. Somebody may say, well, Brother Dijonette, how in the world did you come up with a topic like that? The reason why I share this topic on, with the title that I gave you is because, sadly, in today's religious world, people will take one thing, and you'll see what I'm talking about as I go through the sermon today, like grace, mm -hmm. and, and, and base salvation, their total salvation of grace, mm -hmm. or faith. Mm -hmm. God, uh, uh, Brother Dijonette, I'm a believer, yes. so I, therefore I know I'm saved. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody else may come with something else, and I'll go through all of that. And, and, and it's hard to get people to realize some things when they're looking at one element yes. to be the totality that constitutes their salvation. Amen. And it is not that way. It's not that way in the scripture. Salvation is comprehensive. It, it encompasses more than just one element. Right. But for people who have based their salvation off of one element, when you're going to them and trying to get them to understand the totality or the comprehensiveness of salvation, they tell you, I'm already saved. Yes, sir. When in reality, they're not. And I just have to lay it out there. That's my job as a preacher. Right. Right. So, I, again, I've gone through this these series with kid gloves and being very considerate because the Bible tells us to consider how you would want to be taught mm -hmm. if you were mm -hmm. lost. Mm -hmm. So I address these sermons with that same mutual respect that I would want someone to teach me. Amen. Because learning new information, it's, it's, it's a emotionally conflicting. One, it's exciting because you're being taught some stuff that you may not have been aware of prior. So from that standpoint, it's very intriguing. The other thing is that sometimes it can be upsetting because you based your life on some information that hadn't been totally accurate. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, you may be upset with a lot of things. And sometimes, sadly, you even get upset with the person that's sharing the truth with you. Amen. That's your friend. Amen. And so I don't want you getting upset with me because I'm your friend. I'm the person on the battlefield fighting the devil on my behalf and on yours. Amen. The books that take heed to thyself and to the doctrine that by doing so you may save yourself and them that hear thee. Yes. So I have a responsibility to keep myself safe but also to save you too. Amen. So learning new information can take you on a bunch of emotional swings and so therefore I'm guiding you with that consideration but I'm sticking with the book. Amen. And so what I want to say to you as we get ready to get started, the challenge of another challenge that I have as a preacher is that even though I know I'm coming with right motives, the right intent, and with a proper delivery, I understand that I have to battle through some of the damage that's been caused by other members of the Church of Christ mm -hmm. who did not know how to do those things. Right. Mm -hmm. And they did more harm to the evangelism then they did good. And so therefore, I have to try to navigate through all of those murky waters, mm -hmm. get you to see that I'm a different entity from mm -hmm. what you have encountered in the past. Mm -hmm. And then I also have to direct your attention to the Bible, the Bible church. Because if you focus your thought processes just on a congregation that you may have visited in the past, yes, sir. And they said some things or did some things or caused you to feel not so happy in that one visit. Then it may have turned you off to a degree, you see. But what I'm preaching is the Bible. And what I want you to see is the Bible. I want to make the distinction that there are congregations of the Church of Christ who have personalities. The minister may preach with a personality. The thing that we have to understand is that a congregational personality is not the Bible. That's right. It's a congregational personality. Right. Right. Some of those congregational personalities may rub people the wrong way. But that's not the Bible. A minister or a leader or, or elders or the leadership 
have personalities. Mm -hmm. But you have to know the difference between personalities of an individual and a congregation as opposed to the Bible. And what Brother Dijonette is trying to do is get you to see the difference in churches of Christ and their personality and the scripture. And let me go on to say as I get ready to start embarking down this road, if you go visit a church of Christ and it is not friendly, kind, and, and inviting, and all of those wonderful things, and the people in there are not genuine and truly love people of God, get out of that. Yes. <laughs> because you don't need to stop there either. What I'm doing is honing you in to know where to begin your search. Begin your search in the house of God. Amen. Begin it there. Right. And, and that way it'll help make it easier for you when you're trying to find the right thing. But even when you go to a church of Christ that has this sign out and everything, whatever, and you go in there and those people are crazy or foolish or downright stupid, leave because those are human beings who are not committed and converted to the word of God. So the Bible is what's right. Amen. That's what I'm continuing to push, Amen. the Bible. Amen. And that's what I'm going to get ready to go into this morning. So our lesson topic is entitled, Salvation is Not a One-Hit Wonder. And I came with that, you know, when you listen to people who made one song, and that one song was a big hit. Yes. But after that one song, you don't hear about them anymore. Yes. And so therefore, when they do uh, things that take you back in history, they, they want to look at the one-hit wonders. Well, what I want to say to you, that one element of salvation is not a one-hit wonder, of comprehensiveness towards your salvation. In John 3.16, we're going to begin with the Father. The Father is connected with salvation. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, or they shall be saved. So we're beginning with the Father. The Father wants us to be saved. Amen. You see, today, we want to examine man's salvation comprehensively rather than by one word or action that we have accepted to constitute our salvation. One of the biggest challenges when studying with people is their belief that they are saved because of one or two things that they have accepted or hold on to, not realizing that there is more. Example, an automobile. An automobile is not complete with just a set of tires. Amen. It takes more than just four sets of uh, four tires to constitute an automobile. An automobile is not a it is not a complete uh, resource if you only have an engine and the drivetrain. <clears throat> no, that's the engine and the drivetrain. An automobile for it to be complete has to have all of the systems in place. Amen. It has to have the ignition system, the exhaust system, and, and all of these systems, the drivetrain, the wheels, and the steering wheel, it has to have all of that. But, but if you come to a person and say, I have an automobile, and they say, well, show me your automobile, sir, mm -hmm. and you take them over and show them four tires stacked up in the corner, mm -hmm. and you tell them, this is my automobile, the person who has knowledge to know that four sets of tires does not constitute an automobile is going to tell you responsibly those are four tires not an automobile. Amen. So if you can see that you can see that it takes more than just faith. It takes more than grace. It takes more than just hope if you base it and so forth. So some people when we're dealing with the Father, when you're trying to get them to see what salvation encompasses, they say, oh preacher, I know I'm saved because I have a relationship with the Father. Yes. Oh, it's more than that. Yes, it is. It's more than that. Yes, it is. It's more than that. But when you relegate it to just one entity, you're going to miss the mark. You see, the study today is to examine the fact that salvation is not a one-hit action or belief. It is comprehensive as the Bible will outline for itself. Now, let's get started. So today, the breakdown that you see on your screen is going to consist of various entities that constitute salvation. The Father and salvation, grace and salvation, the Holy Spirit and salvation, hope and salvation, the Lord and salvation, faith 
and salvation, and baptism and salvation. Now let's begin with the Father. You've already heard me deal with him. The Father intends for us to be saved in John 3.16. I've already dealt with him. But let's jump down to grace and salvation. In Titus chapter 2, in the verses 11 and 12, the book says what? For the grace of God that brings salvation, salvation has appeared to all men, appeared unto all men teaching, teaching us that denying us ungodliness, that denying ungodliness and, worldly lust, and worldly lust, we should live soberly, we should live soberly righteously, righteously, godly, and godly in, in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and so forth and what have you. So some mistake grace to mean that there is nothing for man to do, God has done it all <laughs> through grace. Not so. Amen. Let's examine a little bit more. In Titus chapter 3, in the verses of 4 through 5, the book says what? But after that, the kindness of love of God our Savior toward man appeared. Pause. He's going on to say, here is the grace. The kindness of the love of God our Savior toward man appeared. Man had nothing to do with God having love in his heart to send a savior down to the world. Amen. He had nothing to do with that. That is unmerited favor. That is grace. Read. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved but us. But according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So he made it clear that it was nothing that man was doing that was so wonderful that God decided, you know what? These people down here are living so well. Let me send my son Jesus down to die for them. That's what it's talking about. Now, here's man's part. Here's man's part. In Titus 3, in the same book or letter, in, the, in just a few verses down, listen to what he says and to my friends that are listening who have accepted a belief or a theology or a philosophy that all you have to do is, is, is you save just because it's God's grace and there's no works that you have to do. In verse 8, the book says what? This is a faithful saying. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm and these things that thou affirm constantly. Read, that they which have believed in that God. they which have believed in God. Might be careful to maintain might good be works. careful to maintain good works. Read. These things are good and profitable unto men. These things are good and profitable unto men. Read. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses. And let these brothers and sisters who have obeyed the gospel learn to maintain good works. Read. That they not be unfruitful. That they not be unfruitful. So, Houston, we have a problem. Because, you see, people have erroneously taught that... You know, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. See, not of works, lest any man should boast. And, and they, they erroneously take that verse out of context, not realizing what it is saying. Yes. When Paul wrote that over in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, he was dealing with people who were trying to go back and live under the old law. Yes. And Paul had to make it clear to them that it's not your life that you were trying to live under the old law or your good deeds, of which Paul then came back here in the same book of Titus chapter 3 and explained the same thing. No, it's because God is good and he loves man. He loves him so much he sent a savior to, to save him. Yeah. Now, but they miss in Ephesians 2, 8 yeah. and 9, they miss through faith. The through faith part is our part. Amen. The grace is God's part. He sent the savior. The through faith is our part. By faith, Moses, he neglected Egypt or, 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 or left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Yes. For he looked for a greater country, you see. By faith, Noah built an ark with fear. Yes. By faith, Rahab secured the spies that came to her. Yes. By faith, God's people wrought righteousness, subdued kingdoms, and, and so forth. So faith is through faith is an action. Yes, sir. So grace is what God provided, but through faith is what we have to do. So when people misunderstand that and they say, well, hey, brother, we, just, we saved through grace. There's nothing that we have to do. All you have to do is read a verse down in chapter, in verse 10. I've already quoted uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Get from it just a verse down from where it says, you are saved by grace and not of works 
what does verse 10 say? The book says what? For we are his workmanship. For we yes. are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Created in unto Christ good works, Jesus unto, unto, unto good, good, works. good works. Which God have before ordained Which that we God should walk in them. Or, or before ordained yes. that we should what? Walk yes. in them. Walk in them. So you see, we have to work. Yes. See, so when people erroneously say, I'm saved, I know I'm already saved, there's nothing that man has to do because we're saved by grace. Oh, it's more that goes with that. There's more that goes with that. And I want to show you something here in John 6 and 29. Read that for me, brother. Read. Jesus answered and said unto them. Jesus answered and said unto them. This is the work of God. This is, listen, the work of God. That ye believe on him. That you believe on him. Whom he has sent. Whom he has sent. So believing is work. Yes. <laughs> that one hit y'all Snuck up on you, didn't it? <laughs> Believing. Yeah. When people say, all I have to do is believe and have faith. There's no work that I have to do. John 6 and 29 said, what? Jesus answered and, Jesus said, answered unto them, and said unto them, this is the work of this God. This is the work of God. That you believe on him. That you believe on him. Whom he has sent. Whom he sent. Let's jump now down to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and salvation. Listen at this verse. In Ephesians 1, 13, listen at how uh, the Holy Spirit is coupled with salvation. Read. In whom ye are also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. There it is. Read. In whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the, that Holy Spirit of promise. So therefore now, you have the Father and salvation. So you just can't say... I have a relationship with the Father and it leaves right there because you're God-fearing or a good person. I dealt with that one in the very first sermon of the series. Amen. You can't just stop with saying you have a relationship with the Father. No, because when we get down to grace, grace now is coupled with salvation. Yes, sir. Amen. We continue to come on down. If, if you just stop with grace, I'm, I know I'm saved because, because of God's grace. You're going to miss it. Now we're getting down to the Holy Spirit is connected to salvation. Now, for those people who say, oh, I have the Holy Spirit and, and, and I don't have to, you know, go to church anywhere. I don't have to go to Bible class because I got the Holy Spirit, child, and I know that I'm saved. God been good to me. Have y'all ever heard that before? Yes, Let me say this to you. God is good to everyone. Amen. God is good to the sinner as well as to the saint. Amen. The book Jesus said over in the book of Matthew that he allows his sun to shine on the sinner and the saint. He allows his beautiful, precious rain to come down on the sinner and the saint. So you just can't say that because God is good to you, that you know you say. God is good to everybody. Amen. He's good to everybody. So you can't stop with that. Now, so now, let's keep on going. So let's get down now to hope and salvation. Hope and salvation. In Romans chapter 8 and the verses 24, the book says what? For we are saved by hope. We are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for it? So now you see how hope now is coupled with salvation? Mm -hmm. So where's the danger in that preacher? The danger in that is if somebody says, you know, I have hope in God. And therefore, I'm saved because that's what the Bible says. All right. Salvation is coupled to the Father. Mm -hmm. Salvation is coupled with grace. Mm -hmm. Salvation is coupled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Salvation is coupled with hope. Mm -hmm. But now, if you just take one of those and try to base your salvation on one of those, you're messing up. Let's keep on going. The Lord is coupled with salvation. In Luke 19 and 10, the Bible says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. So Jesus, the Lord, he's coupled with salvation. His whole mission was to come down to save man. All right. All right. So if you just say, oh, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. And you just use that verse right there because Jesus brought down salvation. I'm letting you know you're coming up short. Let's see what else is coupled with salvation. Faith is coupled with salvation. In Hebrews chapter 11 and the verse 6, the book says what? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Read. 
Okay, that, that gets that. All right, so then we pull Mark 16, 15, 16. Let's look at faith. By, let's see if faith is coupled with salvation. The book says what? And he said unto them, Go ye into all the land and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. All right, so we have faith coupled with salvation. Now, for the person who says, I'm a believer. Mm -hmm. Bro, preacher, I'm a believer. I'm a believer, so therefore I know I'm saved. It's more that goes with that. Yes, sir. Yes. And let me show you what I'm showing you. You can see the theme already with what I'm doing for you. Mm -hmm. You have the Father, faith, hope, grace, Holy the Lord, Holy Spirit. the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. All of these are linked to salvation. Yeah. The problem that the world is getting into is when they take one of those and make it be their saving virtue. What I'm showing you as God's preacher is you cannot just take one of those and that be what your salvation is built on. Right, right. You have to bring them all together. 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 Yes. And this is what my job as a preacher is. This is what a God-fearing preacher does. Mm -hmm. He takes the part that you have right and he gives you credit for what you have right. Amen. Mm -hmm. But the job that I have before me is to get you to see. Hold to what you have. Hold what you got. But what my job is to do is make you aware that there is more that goes with it. Amen. Amen. I hope you appreciate it. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, in bat baptism is coupled with salvation. We just read that in Mark 16, 15 and 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So baptism is coupled with salvation. Get from it now, Acts chapter 2 and the verses 37 and 38. The book says what? Now when they heard this, now when they, heard this they were pricked in their heart. They were pricked in their heart. And said unto Peter. On, and said unto Peter. And to the rest, and of, the the rest apostles, of the apostles. Men and brethren. Men and brethren. What shall we do? What shall we do? And that question has to do with salvation. Yeah. Read. And then Peter said unto them. Then Peter said unto them. Repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name. Of you, some every of you, one of you. Some of you be baptized. Every one of you. I can just believe and be saved. Every one of you. I can be saved like the thief on the cross and not worry about baptism. And be baptized every one of you. You see, after. See, this is Acts chapter 2 after Christ has died. Yes, sir. And now the plan of salvation is being executed. Yes, sir. The thief, I've already talked this before, but for those who may be listening to this sermon and didn't get that previous teaching, I'm doing this for you. The thief caught Jesus before he died. Yes, yes. So therefore, it's just like writing a will. Mm -hmm. The Bible lets me know that there is no, uh, the, pro the, the will is not probated until after the testator dies. Yes. That's over in Hebrews chapter 9. Pick it up somewhere around verse 16, 17 and so forth. Go and read it all. Mm -hmm. So I can change, add, delete, edit, revise, all kind of things in my will as long as I'm living. Amen. But when I die, my death executes the will. Yes. Yes. So therefore, when Jesus was teaching about baptism in Mark 16, 15, and 16, he hadn't died yet. Amen. So therefore, when the thief caught Jesus on the cross with him, that, that was not executed yet. Right. Baptism and remission of sins and so forth. Right. So when the thief turned to Jesus and said, Lord, remember me in thy kingdom and so forth. Jesus told him, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Now, Jesus was still alive. Yes, sir. But when he bowed his head, Gave up the ghost and said, and gave, said it is finished, and gave up the ghost that executed the wheel. Now, everybody after that point must be baptized. Amen. So, just simply saying that you want to be saved like the thief, you're out of date and out of time. And see, it's my job to help you understand and know that. Amen. See, when you get up somebody, I'm not saying that they're trying to intentionally deceive you, but, but you're being deceived just the same because they're not putting in pertinent information that you need to know. Amen. Yes. See, I got, a, I got a big job. Amen. I got a big job. I have to go back and then 
clean up what somebody else messed up. I have to go back and then arrange what somebody else rearranged and put all of that in an understanding order for you and then get you on the right track and then help you to go from there. And that's what I'm doing. Amen. I hope I'm trying to get it done for you. Amen. You see, it's a big job, but I got to do it. Yes. So Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you at this point. Nobody can be saved without baptism. Read. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Read. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So now baptism is connected to salvation. Yes. Now, you cannot be just baptized mm -hmm. and be saved. See, some people, let me show you how they want to just do one and leave out the others. You can't do it. Yes, Teaching, a contrite heart, contrite spirit, all of that comes before you being baptized. Yes, sir. In other words, some people may want to come into the church and just find a man. Some people may want to come into the church just to find a woman. And, and they don't really want to be taught the gospel. They don't want to be really taught the truth. They're just looking for a man or a woman. They're looking for a husband or a wife. Amen. And so the man or the woman who's connected to the scripture say, well, you know, I'm not, we're not going to go that way because you're not a member of the Lord's church, and therefore, so the woman said, well, what do I need to do? I'll get baptized. Wait a minute. Yes, are you getting baptized to please God, or are you getting baptized to get a man? Amen. Right. See, you just, baptism by itself does not constitute your salvation. You still have to hear the gospel. You have to believe it. You have to repent. You have to con confess Christ as being Lord. Then get baptized, and then the baptism counts. Amen. I'm showing you how all of these link together. You just can't take one of them and then say you saved because you're doing one of them. Now listen to what Peter told them to do. In Acts chapter 2 and the verses are 40 through 41, he says, And with many, I want you to listen well, and with many other words did he testify unto them and exhort, saying, Save, listen, yourselves from this untoward crooked generation. Yes. Then they that gladly, not madly, gladly received the word, were baptized. And, the, and they were added unto them that day 3,000 souls. So now, Peter said, remember this verse, save yourselves. Say it with me. Save yourselves. We're going to see what constitutes saving yourself has to do as we get on down. I'm almost through. You see, before going any further, before going any further, I have a question. Do you believe what was shared with you up to now? Do you believe what I've shared with you up to now? Yes. yes. Okay. Why not? So, so you believe that the Father and salvation are connected? Yes. Okay. You believe that grace and salvation are connected. Yes. You believe that hope and salvation are connected. Yes. You believe that faith and salvation are connected. Yes. And you believe that baptism and salvation are connected. Yes. Correct? Okay, I just want to poll to see what, what I have. Okay, all right. Well, I saved this one for last. Because the church of Christ the church of God and salvation connected. are connected. Amen. In Acts chapter 2 in the verses 47, the book says, what? Praising God. Praising God. And having faith with all, all the people. And the Lord added to the, the church. And the Lord added to the church. Daily. Daily. As should be saved. Such as should be saved. Yes, sir. You can't get around that now. You can't get around that. There is no wiggle room. I took the crutches. I took the cane. I took the arm that you're leaning on. And I took your misunderstanding away from you and saved the church and salvation being connected for last. Amen. Now, how can you say that God and salvation is connected? The Lord and salvation are connected. Faith and salvation are connected. Hope and salvation are connected. Grace 
and salvation are connected. And then get down to the end where the Bible says they were praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church such as should be saved. How you going to get around that? Okay. Boy, it's mighty quiet in here. Okay. You see, because I just dropped a bump. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I saved that one for last is because I was setting you up. And so for those that are listening online, I know that you've been told by people who don't know any better and who are ignorant. Amen. I know you've been deceived by the devil Amen. that you can be saved without the church. Mm -hmm. I know you've been told that, you've been, that you can be saved without even going to church. Mm -hmm. Read verse 47 again, and this is the word of God. I'm not going to quote it. We're going to take the time and let the man read the book. In verse 47, the book says what? Praising God. Praising God. And having favor with all the people. He's having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church. And the Lord added to the definite article church. Whose church was it? It wasn't the one built at the time, and it was his. It was the church of Christ, the church of God, the household of faith, the bride, the kingdom, all of those that I've been preaching on this whole month. Amen. The church of Christ, read on, such as should be what? Saved. Such as should be saved. How in the world are you going to get around that? You can't get around it, brother. See, that's why I say, you come into a man with a nuclear bomb, and you got a water gun. You coming to me with no bullets, and I got plenty of them. And I'm letting the Bible do its own talking. Amen. Amen. The book is just right. Yes. Now, let's, let's remember, I told you to remember verse 40. But big man, if you will, go back up to verse 40. Where, Paul, where Peter said, save yourselves. Go back one. Now, he told them to save themselves. You got it? Here you go. Okay, on page 4. Listening to what Peter told them. Read, read. Now he told them to save themselves. Read. And with many other words. And with he, many other words. Did he testify and did exhort? Did he testify and exhort? Saying, save yourselves. Save yourselves. Yes. Paul, you don't have to go any further. Mm -hmm. Now, what was included in them saving themselves? Now go back to verse 47. Okay. Read. Praising God and right. having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily as what? Should be saved. Save yourself from the church of Christ preaching, which was Peter. <laughs> Peter told them to save yourself. Yes. And then, as he went on and talked to them and gave them more information, being added to the church that you can read about in the Bible was a part of that process. Mm -hmm. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord, baby, is going to do it forever. And this is the word by which the gospel is preached unto you. Amen. Amen. It's just right. Yes. Yes. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I'm in the Bible church. Now let's get ready to bring it down. It's going to be a gradual decline, but I'm coming on down. You see, let's revisit now. I want you to take your Bibles, and I want you to open it up. It's going to be on the screen, but I want to work you a little bit. Let's revisit the unity platform as we get ready to land. You see, salvation is comprehensive and not a one-hit wonder. Mm -hmm. You see in Ephesians chapter 4, and the verses are 3 through 6, the book says what? Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. He said, I want you to be diligent. I want you to make every effort. Yes. I want you to make sure that you are digging to maintain peace. Read. There is one body. There is one body. Hold up. 
I don't want to go no further because this is, this is concluding this series, but I'm not through on dealing with some stuff. Get from it now, Ephesians 1, 22. I'll read it for the sake of time. In Ephesians chapter 1, the Bible says, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Yes. Now, Paul in writing just in, earlier in the letter said that the church is the body and the body is the church. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul, how many churches is it in the Bible that God has approved of? There is how many? One body. There is one church. One. Read on. And one spirit, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope, for one hope of your calling. Read the one Lord, one Lord, one faith, one faith, one baptism, one baptism, one God, one and God. Father of all. Read who is above all and through all and in you all. Now what I did, what I did for you, without putting Ephesians four three through six up there and announcing that at the beginning. I started from the back and went back to the front. I started with the Father because everybody agrees that there is one God. And that salvation is connected to that one God. Yes. I went on and came all the way up the list as you have witnessed this morning. And I saved the church for last. Because when you agree that there is one Father, one hope, one Lord, one faith and all of that. And then we go all the way back up and we get to the one church. Now tell me how in the world you're going to disagree with that. Right. You can't. No. Somebody need to come give their life to the Amen. Lord. Amen. It's not the morning. And yeah. stop fighting God. Stop fighting the man of God. You can't do nothing with me. And that's no brag. You can't do nothing with a man of God that's reading this book. You can't do nothing with it. Right. Amen. The Bible says you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Yes, sir. When a man is preaching and teaching the unadulterated word of God, word for word, and is talking for itself, the only thing left for you to do is surrender. Yeah. And say, Lord, thank you for sending a Bigfoot preacher my way. Amen. Thank you Amen. for sending a man with beautiful feet. How beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel in glad tidings. Romans chapter 10. How beautiful are his feet. You have to be thankful that God sent somebody with beautiful feet to bring you the truth. In this world of religious confusion, in this world with so much denominationalism, in this world with so much chaos, you have to be thankful. And I'm thankful to be appointed to bring it to you. Amen. I'm thankful. Yes, sir. I don't put no roses on me. I'm thankful that he decided to use a man like me. Amen. You see, if you can agree with the other pieces that are connected to salvation, well, it's hard to understand how the one church connects to salvation. Right. But we have been deceived by the devil from our childhood. Don't be angry, friend. Be thankful for God's grace of showing you the truth and be obedient. Amen. Get baptized in the Bible church and live faithful unto death. Yes. This is not a prideful competition for me or for those of us that are in the church of Christ. You see, <clears throat> it's not about who has the biggest church as a preacher, vanity, or who knows the most. This is silliness. Yes. And this is what has corrupted the religious world today. People, when they get the truth, they don't want to obey the truth because they're worried about having to humble down under somebody that's been trying to tell them the truth for years Amen. and they know they've been bucking. Amen. And then, to, to rather than to obey God and, and face the public humility that it takes to come back and say, brothers and sisters, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. There were some things that I didn't have complete. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Y'all, we need to change this thing. Mm -hmm. And if we need some help, the man has told us he'll come here and help us. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't beat that. Now you keep on floundering around if you want to. The Bible, as I'm finna get ready to end this lesson, gonna let us know that God is coming as a thief in the night. Yes, yes, yes. And when he comes, he's coming with judgment, but he's also coming with a mansion robe and a crown for those that have obeyed. Yes. I want you to be in that number. I want you to be in that number. So you see, all of this other foolishness is silliness. 
You see, I love you as God's preacher. Amen. And I want you to be saved. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Do you appreciate me for this? Now, that's the question. Mm -hmm. Now, as we get ready to wrap this thing, let's get to our conclusion. The lesson is yours. Now, in Matthew chapter 24 and verses 11 through 14, we're going to let Jesus, the King of kings, Lord of lords, the one that said, upon this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We're going to let the one in John chapter 16, John chapter 17 say, I came from my father to do his will. We're going to let him close out this lesson. And he's a bad boy. Yes, sir. In Matthew chapter 24, the verses are 11 through 14, the book says what? And many false prophets and many false shall, prophets arise. shall arise and shall deceive many. And they're going to deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound. And because wickedness is going to overtake this old world. The love of many shall wax cold. The love of many is going to get cold. They're not going to even have an interest. They're not going to have a fire in their belly for God. Preaching, that's the last thing they want to hear. They want to go watch a ball game. They want to go eat something. Stop your jaws from jumping and losing weight. Come on you can stand losing a meal or two. Come on God said, Come on the love of many is going to wax cold. They're going to they're be interested in some of everything else other than hearing what a 45-minute lesson can do to save their soul, but not only them, but for all of the generations of people that come after them. Yeah. Read. But he that shall endure unto the end. But those that's wise and smart and hang on to their faith to the end. The same shall be saved. The same gonna be saved. Read. And this gospel of the kingdom. And it is this gospel of the kingdom. It is this gospel of the church of Christ. That's what he's saying. Read. Shall be preached in all this the world. Be preached to all the world. For a witness, For a unto, witness all the nations. unto all the nations. And then shall the end come. And then the end gonna come. God said, I'm going to see to it that the whole world get the truth about that one church. Yes, yes sir. He said, and it's going to be people, he's going to come on down and tell you as you're closing this thing out. It's going to be people that ain't going to pay it a bit of mind. Let's go ahead and let him tell us about it. Yes, In Matthew chapter 24, the verses of 35 and 37, the book says what? Heaven and earth shall pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall but not pass away. My word is not going to pass away. It's not going to change. I don't care if it's the president don't like it. The pope don't like it. The big time preacher don't like it. The rich man don't like it. The white man don't like it. The black man don't like it. It's not going to change. Read. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. Come on. No, not the angels of heaven. But my father only. But as the days of no were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus took this thing all the way back to the beginning of time. He said, but now, when you read your Bible, mm -hmm. if you have ever read the story of Noah and the ark, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. he said it's going to be the same, same way when I come back. Same. It's going to be the same way. The only difference is Noah was a prefigure of me. Yes, sir. I'm the real thing. Yes. I'm the right one, baby. Yes. I'm, Noah was a prefigure of me. You got the real thing in me. Right. Yes, sir. The ark was a prefigure of the church. Mm -hmm. You don't have a prefigure no more. Mm -mm. You have the kingdom here on earth that I talked about from last week that came down from heaven. Yes, sir. The church. The church here on earth. Mm -hmm. So the church is the ark. Now, in that ark, you had one door in it. Yes, sir. In that ark, you had one window mm -hmm. in it. Jesus said in John chapter 10, I am the door. Yes, if sir. any man enter, he's going to have to enter in by me. Yes. If anybody come up some other way, he's worse than a thief and a robber. Yes. In John chapter 1, you get on down there to verses 14 through 17 or so, you'll see what Jesus said. I am the light. I am the window. I am the light source that's yes. coming into this hall. Yes. Yes. I am it. Yes, yes sir. Thank you. Jesus is the light. Yes. He's the light. Yes, he is. Now, when God got ready to destroy the world, he told Noah and his one family <laughs> that they all wore the same name. Oh, people don't the name don't matter. Hmm. You know that he said, now y'all go in the ark. Yes. And God shut the door. Yes, he did. Church, this is what he's telling us. Yeah. Yeah. He said, nobody knows when the Father is going to send me back. He said, I don't even know. Yes. He's just going to send me. And I'm so obedient to my Father. The Bible says, as the lightning flashes from the east to the west, is that's how fast yeah. I'm coming back on a cloud. Yes. You're going to blink in the twinkling of an eye 
am going to be here. And for all of those that didn't obey the gospel and get in that one church, he said, you're going to be lost. I'm finna show you. He's gonna tell you himself. Bread ain't preaching this sermon. Jesus is. In Matthew chapter 24, and the verses are 40 through 44. This is our last verse, and I want you to pay close attention. And for those of you who are not members of the Church of Christ, I wouldn't waste not another day not getting baptized. The book says, What? Then shall two be in the field. Then shall two be in the field. Then one shall be taken. One is gonna be taken. And the other left. The other one's gonna be left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal. Two women grinding at the meal. And the one shall be taken. One taken. And the other left. The other left. Read the watch, watch therefore. I'm telling all of you humanity, watch therefore. For ye know not what hour for your you Lord don't know doth when come. I'm coming back. Read. But know this. But I want you to know this. That if the good man of the house had known. That if that, the good man of the house had known. And what watch the thief would come. what watch the thief would come. He would have watched and would have not he would have watched his house. and not allowed his life, his soul, his house to be broken up. Read. Therefore be ye also ready. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour For as you such think an hour not, that you think not. The son of man coming. The son of man is on the way. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have learned, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word which was spoken by angels was steadfast, then every transgression received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect to obey God? I forget the rest of it. But you going to have to get in here and obey God. Amen. Amen. I done worked up a sweat today. But if this sweat will get you to see that it's not but one church, Amen. it's not but one Lord, it's not but one God and Father, it's not but one faith, it's not but one baptism, and I can stand and preach on this all day long and can't nobody come to prove me wrong. Amen. 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 Jack, I'm going to tell you again. I thank you. I thank you. I thank the Lonely Family. Yes. I'm thankful for all those that have come before me. I'm through, y'all. This concludes our series. Oh, but it don't conclude some more powerful preaching that's on the way. Because now what I'm going to deal with, I'm going to deal with inside the kingdom. I'm going to deal with these foolishness that's going on in the church. And some of the crazy theologies and foolishness that they teach that turn people off, that's not so. It's not according to the scripture. And we're going to deal with that. If you are not a member of the Church of Christ, Amen. you need to be. Yeah. By hearing, believing, <clears throat> repenting, confessing, and being baptized. I want you to give me your hand. And I want you to give God your heart. Yeah. And give your life to Jesus the way our sister. Sister Bunny came forward last week. Stand up, Sister Bunny. Just stand up. All I need you to do is stand up. Just stand up. Y'all give a hand clap of praise. Give her life to the Lord and got baptized last week. And we're waiting on our daughter to come, which I don't think is going to be much longer. And I'm looking at some more in here who are not members. I want you to pray seriously that God give you time to get baptized. Before it's too late. Amen. That ain't almost been up close to it, just about it. Yes, That's it. The book is just right. I know y'all was looking for it last week and I didn't give it to you, <laughs> but you got it today. While together we stand the same, won't you come?